This week on Crunch Week, we're talking about the best of CES. Hi, and welcome to Crunch Week. I'm Jordan Crook. I'm Daryl Eddington. And I'm Greg Comparic. And like we said, we're talking about CES. It's been a great week. You guys had fun? Yeah, we're done. We're done. We made it. Looks like we made yeah. it. <laughs> sort of done. We still got to post a whole bunch of stuff. But. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fun part's over, and now we're just going to write about everything that we did already. Yeah. The hard and part, the, the part of walking around in the middle of the desert, shaking hands, getting sick, getting the CES plague, that's done. That's done. All right. But it was a great week. I mean, I had a blast. Did you guys, I mean, any favorite moments stand out to either of you? I Craigie. have lots of favorites. I thought that was actually a pretty cool year. The, 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 the really big announcements, all the curved screens, whatever, ignore yeah. them. Some of the smaller stuff is where it was at for me, though, like the new Oculus Rift. Uh, so the, with the Oculus Rift, the hard part is they're making a whole new platform. You know, it's this, this virtual reality headset. Nothing like this has really been built before, at least not any good. So they can't just release it. There wouldn't be any games. There wouldn't be anything made for this thing. Right. So they're building it stage by stage. And at first, they're focusing strictly on the developers. And that's where they were about a year ago, you know, just shipping these kind of kind of broken prototypes to developers that had really low res screens and didn't quite do everything that the there final version There was complaints of like nausea and various Yeah, things. and that was largely because the screen was really low resolution and inside the goggles there's like these magnifying glasses that kind of wrap the view around your vision. Mm -hmm. And so you, you take an already low res screen and blow it up and you see every single pixel. Yeah. And the other thing that was a bummer about the first version, it's still, this is only built for developers. They've, they're, they're still a couple months away from ever shipping to consumers. Uh, with that first version, it didn't do position tracking. So while you could look up and you could look down and left and right, if you leaned forward, it did nothing in the game. Yeah. So it immediately broke the immersion and it added to motion sickness because you'd be moving forward and you're in this immersed world and so your inner ear is like, what is going on? <laughs> right. So this latest version, it has a much higher res screen, it's 1080. Uh, and then it has these LEDs around it and an external camera that's tracking these LEDs so you can lean forward and lean back and it, it, it fixes figures a lot that of it. out. Cool. And plus they've done, done a lot of soft stuff on the software side to get rid of the motion sickness. So. And even just minor design tweaks, right? They switched the cable, right? The cable used to come out the side yeah, of your head. Yeah, that's, a, that's and another really good thing. Now the cable kind of like runs from the back end like over your head, which seems trivial, but when you're playing it and when you, you're, you're lost in this world and you've got your hand on your keyboard, your hand on the mouse, and you, you're playing, your arm touches this cable, you're like, what is, your, uh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> the spiders! <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I spoke to the CEO, not, not not at CES, but before, when they were still keeping mum about what they were going to show here, which yeah. turned out to be this. Yeah. And I asked them point blank, like, is it the second version that you guys are talking about that's yeah. in development? And they were like, we can't say anything, but <laughs> clearly was that. It's, yeah, it's still... But he said it's, it's ready. Like, in terms of the experience they want to provide software and, like, how the what the experience is for the consumer, it's ready to ship. Yeah. They just need to finalize the design. All right. And yeah. Then get it so out. the one that they showed off here isn't the consumer version. It's just very, very close to it. All right. Right. So. Yeah. And soon enough, obviously, developers will be building the games for it, and then we'll they've already started. There's yeah. actually a lot of really good demos. John out Carmack right has been doing nothing but building games for yeah, it. Yeah. The, 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 the guy who created it Oculus. said, "I'm out," and joined uh, with Oculus. So awesome. they're, they're they're in a good place. Yeah. Cool. Daryl. Me, I. Actually, this, so this wasn't new to CES, it was announced in November, but they had some demos that were new. So it was uh, Qualcomm's latest processor, which is the Snapdragon 805. I was hoping you'd talk about a processor. I love processors. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love what the processor can do. So the one demo that we, that we uh, saw on the floor was how it can help cameras uh, on smartphones. So it had a couple features, and one of them was refocusing technology. So if you know the Lytro, uh, light field camera, mm -hmm. which is, you can take a picture, it's like a box, and then you can choose to focus on the background, foreground. But it's after the fact. After the fact. Right. Right. Which has never been done before. No, exactly. Right. And that was revolutionary. But now Qualcomm has done that with their processor, and it can do it with any existing camera modules by any of the component suppliers. They essentially built this technology where uh, you have a camera that doesn't fit into either of those categories of smartphone or regular camera, so it's an extra $300 to do something that's really just like a trick. Yeah, that's right? very simple. But if you could do that on your iPhone, yeah. that's a big deal. And Lytro built that technology, and now obviously other companies are going to kind of take over that. And, and they're doing it in different wayside. ways. Like th this one just takes a bunch of exposures. Uh, you know, almost simultaneously. Right, it's not the same thing as that special lens right. that Lytra has. But it has some special capabilities that Lytra doesn't have. Like you can now uh, put the entire field into focus. So the depth oh. of field is amazing. Like you can have detail in the far, far distant background and detail up front and it's all sharp. Um, they did that and they also did a brightness corrector uh, that takes a bunch of exposures and then gives you sort of a more even view of both the background and the foreground and with flash too. Cool. So, Instead of like washing somebody out, making them totally white, gives them more natural tone, 
and also includes the background. And it was like, it still, it still looks like a camera that, or it still looks like a photo that Flash was used to take, but it looks a lot better than you would have with your standard smartphone Flash. Mm. Cool. Yeah. And those will come to market soon, I think. So what, what, really? was, what was your favorite? My favorite. I had such a good CES. It's hard to narrow everything down, but um, I really liked our hardware battlefield, to be honest. I mean, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. not like a shameful plug for TechCrunch, honestly, because the companies that we had, CES has always been more interesting to me when we go visit the little startups that have the tiny little baby booths and they're doing really interesting things. And we essentially, instead of having to go around and visit those booths, we just told them, hey, come to ours and yeah. we'll put you on camera. And the companies that we saw were so awesome. And especially the two companies, the runner up and the winner, I thought were really, really awesome. So the runner up was Outlet. Mm. And I think they're gonna make a huge difference in the future of like just medicine because essentially what they're doing is they're monitoring a little infant with a sock on their ankle. It's like a, tr a fitness tracker, but it's way more inten intense than that. It does temperature and breathing, and even if a baby rolls over, motion tracking, and it alerts the parents. So I think in the end, parents will actually be better parents because they're going to rest easy. They're yeah. going to go to sleep and actually sleep and know that you know the phone will wake them up if there's a problem. Um, and I think that that's really, really cool. And then our winner is even more interesting, uh, cube sensors. You guys remember cube sensors. They are just tiny little boxes that you put in every room of your house and it tracks everything. It tracks motion in the room. It tracks, um, you know, if the air is clean, it tracks if maybe it can hear that you're typing in, a, in an office and it can sense that the, the sun is going down and that that room is getting darker and alert you to turn on the light so that your eyes aren't straining so much. Mm -hmm. It's just like a long-term thing. We're getting so obsessed with data around our lives how healthy am I and what's going on in my world and what am I eating and you know putting stuff on crazy scales that tells you how many how much nutrition come in it but we never worry about our environment you know no one's tracking how healthy your home is and I think that's a really interesting breakthrough I'm excited to see what they do yeah I think uh, so both those companies we also had another air sensor quality company in the battlefield but they didn't sense any of the other stuff that you're talking about the ambient well, and it's cool because it's almost like you you have more of an insight into your home because it goes beyond uh, just general health. It goes to like if you have a 17 year old son and you go away for the weekend, yeah. it can tell that you had the music up really loud in the living room at 3 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, what was that about, son? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's the kind of thing where you don't have that kind of insight unless you have like a smart home of the future. And we're all pushing towards that. And this is just a really small piece of it, but it's it's kind of almost the fabric that holds it all together, right? You're a window into every single room of your home. I just yeah. think it's really interesting. Yeah, my only like concern there was price like per unit, right? But they well, were arguing that it's similar to, uh, what do you call it, like smart bulbs or other things that people have. Right, well, I mean, about. what, the Hue, set, like three light bulbs is what, like $200, $300 yeah. Yeah. with the bridge? And I believe that the cube sensors, you start with two for $199. Mm -hmm. I'll have to double check that in post. But um, I, I, I think that that's pretty fair for an apartment. I live in a one bedroom. That's all I would need. Yeah, so for small spaces, it's, it's very and then, affordable. And then you can obviously get more. I think it goes all the way up to six. But um, I think it, I think at the in the end, when you realize the health benefits and you realize that you're not losing your sight because it's telling you to turn the lights on when you should, or if you realize that you know there might be a real issue in your home with you know something that you're breathing in and getting sick all the time, I yeah. think that that's totally worth it. I really do. I think the idea is also that you're not in every room of your house constantly. Right. You know, and so. It, Really, even if you have, say, a four-bedroom house, you might be in the in the office a lot of the time, and in, in your in your bedroom and your living room. That's that's three. If you have a six-bedroom house, you, you don't need six of these sensors. You can just move them from room to room. Yeah, do one. a spot check and, and make sure. And there's a yeah. good chance that the dining room doesn't need to be, you know, AC'd or warmed the way that you know um, other rooms do. You're not yeah. in there all the time. You're saving money. I mean. I bet, honestly, I bet you could make up your cube sensors investment pretty quickly in just AC and heating bills. Yeah. Anyways, these are the things that I cared about a lot. I also met Martha Stewart, so that was a big, yeah. a big for you. Well, I was going to say the caliber of the judges was really good, too. Oh, for yeah. Battlefield. We yeah, had some we cool had some people. Brie Pettis years. was up there. Yeah. Martha. Eve Behar, the designer. The designer. Really Jambox yeah. designer, right? Yeah. Some other stuff. Steve Jobs yacht yeah. designer. Yeah. Steve Jobs yacht. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> big deal. Yeah. <laughs> This is a wrap, essentially. Is there anything else you guys want to share to our, our loving and loyal CES audience? Well, That's it's some it. great stuff, but like, you know, check out the website. We've got all, all kinds of video clips up there. And we'll so be posting much. throughout today and tomorrow. Yeah. The Thanks for everyone that tuned into the live stream. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. yeah, it's like we, we really try to do CES a little bit differently from other publications who have just like thousands of people sprawled out writing posts and taking pictures. Yeah. And we really want to bring you to CES. And I when feel you like watch. You're walking the show floor with us. And so. when you watch and when you tweet to the hashtag CES Crunch, it really means something because we know you're actually experiencing 
experiencing with us. And so we appreciate that for sure. All right, that's a wrap for Crunch Week. Thanks for watching, guys.